Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios, it's time for Women in Motion. Brought to you by WBEC West. Join forces, succeed together. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Women in Motion, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, Webeck West. Without them, we couldn't be sharing these important stories. Today on Women in Motion, we have Miss C, and she is with Miss C's Homestyle. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us about Miss C's Homestyle. How are you serving folks? Well, yes, Missy's Home Style, the services we provide are private chef services and catering in both the private and corporate uh, sectors. Service areas are the metropolitan areas of Arizona, Nevada, and California. We travel a little bit. <laughs> so what's your backstory? How'd you get involved in this line of work? Uh, you know what? It, it all began, I guess it was a hidden gift inside. Of, of course, I've had other businesses along the way, but at some point, just my need to to deliver good food uh, to the world came to the front, and I've been doing this for several years now. But that is the, my love language. I, I I want to be able to share, and we know that food is that universal language. So I get to talk to everyone. So, but how did the business start? Did you were you just started as a private chef, or or how did it evolve? No, actually, actually, I I started out in the catering business. A lot of my um, book of business at that time was in the nonprofit arena. However, COVID hit. So I had to reinvent myself, if you will, because you could no longer gather in large groups. So this is where the private chef and catering uh, came about. So I cater more on a, on a smaller realm uh, now, along with the private chef services. Now, did you notice that people's kind of what they were looking for, someone with your skill set? it kind of evolved through the pandemic? Like they, there was a big push for meal prepping for a while. Is that still a thing? It is still yes, a thing. Yes. And yes, that's kind of where it began because of course you had that no contact. I wasn't uh, very busy, obviously at that time. However, I began to to realize, you know, uh, how we could, you know, help people by, you know, being able to have food provided uh, for them. And uh, of course that evolved once uh, we were able to gather again. To be able to go in someone's home or Airbnb, and it just became something that I felt really comfortable with. So this is where we are now. Now, how do you manage clients in multiple locations like you do? Well, and the, the locations outside of the Arizona um, area are few and far between. But doing, you know, even in that situation, though, we've done some gigs in, in uh, Las Vegas. We've done some just outside the L.A. area. So, you know, when that opportunity arises, we we see if we can step to the challenge. So do you physically, like you go with your team there or do you hire people locally in the markets? No, I would take, I take my team with me. We would, we would travel, um, you know, depending on the situation, we'll secure a place to prepare the food and then of course, you know, continue on with the event. So any advice for other entrepreneurs out there when it comes to kind of building the relationships that your business needs to be successful? Well, I, I guess the, the, the advice would be, and that, that was a, a big point uh, in growing uh, the business, was uh, forming those business relationships, uh, staying in touch with your, uh, you know, with your client, um, you know, making sure that you, you know, have things taken care of. Something that is important to me and it's customer care. It is different from customer service in that I, I do. I take a personal, um, uh, you know, I take a personal touch to each and every one of my events. So you're you're trying to kind of elevate the level of service to really make sure that they're being cared for and they're getting maybe even more than they um, asked for. No, absolutely. I want to make sure that uh, when we do an event, it is a memorable event. We want, uh, we want you to call us back and we want to make sure that, um, you know, because a, a lot of events that go on and you would agree with me too, food is a major factor <laughs> in the success of that event. So we just want to make sure that uh, when you call upon us uh, to provide our services that we come with our A game every time. So when someone contacts you, what does that initial conversation look like? What, how do you help them kind of understand all that you 
can deliver because sometimes people don't know what they don't know. So they'll come in here asking for X, but you know that they'd be better served with, you know, A, B, C, and D. No, absolutely. Um, One of the things that I feel kind of separates me from the rest of the crowd um, is that I do work with the client in a customized menu. I talk to you. I, you know, I want to find out what you like or, you know, if you're doing a birthday party for your husband, well, what is his favorite food? So we want to make sure that the foods that you choose and the ones we prepare are the ones that you enjoy, um, you know, anyway. So we work with that. We also, um, I have a little saying that everybody has a seat at the table in my house because we offer vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free options. That's important to us. We want everyone at the table. So you really kind of scrutinize who's attending. I want to make sure that they feel welcome too, and they're going to get something that they're going to be happy with. No, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, part of me uh, comes through in that business. Um, You know, family is important to me. So these events that I have, they have that vibe to them. They have that feel, that feel of family where everyone uh, it, it, everyone gathers. So, um, uh, when you started this business, was it difficult to get funding? Absolutely. Um, uh, a majority of the funding, um, came from me and my other businesses, um, in getting, um, you know, and getting the, the company started, but that has always been a hurdle. I'm at a point now where I'm looking to scale. So, um, you know, we definitely funding is, is very important. And uh, just as important, uh, you know, as a business, you have to prepare yourself, you know, financially, take a look at and see if you're ready to make that move uh, to get there, you know, to expand the business and and serve even a broader audience. So right now that you're bootstrapping the business and it's, you know, with customer funds are helping, helping you grow kind of organically? I have. I have grown organically, uh, you know, but like I said, at this point in time we are uh, ready to take things to the next level so we're looking at some other funding uh, options to accomplish our goals now why was it important for you to become part of the webeck west community well it was really important I, you know i've known about that organization for a very long time and i'm in the food industry and in the beginning i'm going oh my god they don't you know they're looking for widgets and gadgets and you know intellectual property But, um, you know, I decided to go ahead and become part of that organization, and it has been game changing. Um, It has taught me a lot about building business relationships. Um, It's given me opportunities to showcase what I do, which, of course, has turned into other opportunities. So it's been a very, very important uh, piece in the history and the story that I tell of Miss C's Homestyle. Now, another uh, community that's important to you is um, local farmers. How do you work with uh, those organizations? Definitely. Um, you know, my approach to bringing food uh, to, to the public, part of that was to mimic what I grew up on. You know, grandma used to send me out in the back to, pick, you know, get the tomatoes or onions or whatever we had growing at the time. And I just wanted to continue with that and uh, bring the freshest possible ingredients that I could to the table. So as as a result, um, being able to make those uh, connections and those relationships with local farmers and ranchers has been um, a very important part of Miss C's Homestyle. And I think that's something that folks who aren't familiar and, and haven't had the opportunity to partake in some local farm fresh ingredients, those are like different foods than what you get, you know, kind of on the... Uh, uh, food industrial grocery store, like those, some of those fruits and vegetables could be sitting in, in freezers for months. Like you're not getting freshest stuff, but when you're dealing straight from a local farm, you're getting it right from the hands of the farmer. No, absolutely. And, and I, it is clear that um, just as I have a passion for what I do and a love for what I do, it's, it, it's the same as in the, in the vegetables that you know, that I I would get from them. And you're absolutely right. I'm also a student of sustainable food systems. And when you, when you, when you kind of get an idea of what happens behind the scenes before you see that fruit at the grocery store really makes you want to 
definitely either grow your own or, or, or purchase from local farmers. Right. I remember the first time I had a farm fresh egg and and I cracked it open and it, it was a different food than the egg that from the grocery store. It didn't even look the same. It didn't taste the same. It was a total like they were both called eggs, but the fresh one was tasted a hundred times better. There is a clear difference. So what do you need more of? How can we help you? Well, of, of course, you know, as we continue um, to grow, um, just the support of the community, um, you know, I, I believe, and of course, being part of uh, We Back, because that's one of the things that we are um, looking to do as we um, plan for the coming year. I really want to make a bigger f- footprint in the corporate arena. So, um, you know, just continuing to um, tap into the resources uh, offered by, um, by We Back West. It will definitely allow us to do that. So just let me feed you and it'll be all right. <laughs> so you're looking for more opportunities in corporate and maybe to cater more events? No, absolutely. I mean, in that corporate <laughs> arena, you've got networking meetings, board meetings, department meetings. So there's always an opportunity to provide, you know, a lunch or hors d'oeuvres uh, at the networking meeting or, you know, things like that. So the opportunities are there. Yeah, big or small, there's a lot. Uh, food yeah. is part of uh, the business world every day. So if somebody wants to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, uh, what is the website? What is the best way to connect? Oh, absolutely. Please go to tastemissies.com. And, of course, you get an opportunity to kind of see what we do. We're on Instagram as well under that same handle. And uh, just to see what we're doing in the community. We, uh, you know, and as a small business, I think it's important that we, uh, you know, we, we work within the community. So I do a lot of work with uh, nonprofits, uh, working with children and food and things like that. So we want to be a company that uh, is impacting and making a difference in the communities that we serve. Is there a story you can share, a memorable event you were involved with? Oh, absolutely. Um, There's an organization locally here in in Arizona. It's the Blue Watermelon Project. And we actually go into the schools. We come up with recipes and the children participate. So we make sure that they are are part of that and we educate them on the, the dish or the fruits or the ingredients that are being used. So it's a, it's a great experience to, to watch them, uh, you know, be interested in cooking. And I always uh, tell the kids they're absolutely amazing. And I ask them what they're going to be when they grow up. And you can only imagine how many chefs are coming your way. So That's, it is quite a joy. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more chefs. The Food Network <laughs> is, uh, if people pay attention to that ch- uh, channel. <laughs> now, uh, one more time, the website. The website is tastemissees.com, and that's the word taste, M-S-C-S, dot com. Well, Miss C, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing such important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Women in Motion.